The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. University Tower Chimes bring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show in which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. I'm going to start with Professor Mara Livesey because she literally might evaporate right in the middle of the podcast. That would be oh. terrible. Oh, don't. Oh, I probably How's it going, will. Mara? <laughs> It's going good for now. We'll see how the flight is out to Denver. That's right. Coming to you live from Detroit, Wayne County, Metropolitan Airport. Very gate number, Mara. Cool. Gate number. We got a gate number from you. We got an A72. Mm. Well, because of course. The president has been very stern with bad behavior on airlines. So hopefully you will not experience any of that. Yeah. And everybody will wear their mask and not try to make some stupid political statement. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Just in case, make sure you're taping. Not that kind of <laughs> taping. Oh, <laughs> not, yeah, not duct taping, right? So. Or recording. Or oh, oh, okay. recording. Oh, okay. I felt like I grew up in the 70s, which I did. But you did. I was going to say. <laughs> Make uh, sure you get it on the wax cylinder. Oh, yes. <laughs> Professor Dave Chow is here with us today. Pleasure to be here, as always. How's it going, Dave? So tell, can you tell us a little bit about your next stint on Dead Files? I don't know. I might be in Ohio in two more weeks and two more weeks after that, but we're not sure yet. So okay. I just got done doing an episode last Monday. So okay. locally. Dead, dead I love files? how it's still on the air. Oh, I've yes. never heard of this. What is this? I'll tell you about it off the air, Beth. It's okay. my, my long-standing paranormal TV show. Oh, cool. So it's a living. Doesn't everybody have one of those these days? I mean, come on. This, <laughs> I'm surprised right we don't have haunted UDM just yet. So not my yet. Students, my students asked me if I believed in ghosts. And? So, well... The amount of energy in the universe is constant, right? That's true. So I could imagine that what we now think of as being ghosts or poltergeists are some weird manifestation of leftover energy and we don't yet understand how it works, but science will ultimately provide the answer. I mean- Kind of like the meatloaf I have in the back of my fridge. Sorta, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't believe in ghosts or ESP or any of this crap that they think is real. I'm like, really? You guys think. Think critically. Try hard. <laughs> and those are the wonderful <laughs> opening words of Professor Beth Oljar. All that we need is a final statement on constant vigilance, and we are all set. That's right. Constant vigilance. John Locke and Mad Eye Moody. So you and Mad Eye Moody. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually not as much of a mega B as in class as I sound like on the air. <laughs> I just saved that for you guys. I think it's great that they asked you that though, uh, Beth. That's, oh, just, yeah. that's a, like a teachable moment um, right. of epic proportions, right? I mean, seriously. We're going to do a little metaphysics here. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think that uh, there's a lot that can be learned from listening to what a, a learned person thinks uh, in that area it's it's sort of surprising to me although my version of it since i'm so obsessed with halloween the students make all the requisite assumptions oh you must love horror movies eh, not really oh you must love blood and gore no not really you know i mean there's different layers to that kind of i like stuff, watching right? things blow up yeah exactly <laughs> that's what i like that's right <laughs> uh last but not least professor dan maggio is here with us we're coming to you live from his library. Mm -hmm. Carol Ann, stay away from the light. Um, <laughs> TV people, the TV people are here. I um, love hi, Matt. How are you today? What's going on, Dan? It's another busy week. So uh, it's good, actually. It's Friday. Um, so things are good. Yep. 
Time to get a relaxing weekend. May hit a uh, DCFC football game or soccer game. Ooh. Which one should I say? Um, on Saturday. That's cool. Other than you, other than that, just enjoying the weekend. You going Looks with like... Dave and Sharon? No, I'm going with Tom. Well, I tried to recruit like, Kenny, um... but he has dinner plans, and apparently, a dinner from his sister is more appealing than a soccer game with his best friend. <laughs> Just kidding. Mm. I'm just kidding. Well, Sorry, kidding. Carol's a really good cook. <laughs> I know so, she's know. a very she's an outstanding cook. <laughs> well, I hope I you would... have a good weekend. I think you're Thank gonna have you. some good weather for it, Dan, because um looks like we're getting a nice lease on summer this year. So yep. uh just waiting for that uh, inevitable break to fall, which will come at some point next Wednesday, according oh, to it looks like Mars going down the run going down the path. We might yep. be losing her. Uh oh. Uh-oh. See how far. Oh, geez. The freeze frame. Oh, uh, doggone it. Just watch. We're, we're, we're going to get all Canadian ballet questions today. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, this is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you can win a prize. Send us the questions in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Excellent. Okay, we've got a classic set of questions here, fairly recently sent in. Dear panelists, like some of the questions I've sent in the past to your show, I'll provide a list of four films. And it'll be up to the panelists to come up with the name of the celebrity actor, mm. actress that appeared in all of them. There will also be a bonus question at the end, as all of the responses have something in common. It'll be up to the panel to solve that one as well. A I'll challenge. defer to Professor Mayo's judgment as to what he deems worthy of a passing grade. I don't think <laughs> you want to do that. That's probably and, right. And <laughs> uh, please enjoy. Um, that's Julie Elder of Poughkeepsie, New York. Thanks for sending those in, Julie. Always good to hear from upstate New York folks. Absolutely. Now, there's a place where America does autumn right. That's what I like to say. Mm -hmm. True. Deep in the low life. rolling hills of the Hudson dot 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 mm -hmm. there you go okay so let's uh see if we can warm up a little bit here especially because mara is cracking me up right oh no mara's on the plane now i, I can tell from the vent the above <gasps> oh she's oh, the best purell on god's green earth if, there, if there's any resistance on the plane will you live stream <laughs> <laughs> I will directly to ATP because oh, we'll we'll, we'll certainly make the news on that, and that's oh, free that's that free great. publicity. I don't know whether the university wants that kind of publicity, but <laughs> oh, oh my geez. gosh! All right, so four films, and you're going to okay. give me uh, an actor or actress that uh, starred in all three. Okay, three uh, or four. four. Yeah, okay, we'll try again. It's a Monty Python skit. There you go. Not shout thou pull for uh, the man who fell to earth eating Raul, the graduate, grumpy old men. Not Steve, uh, uh, who played uh, the lady in uh, graduate and, and Bancroft? No, Anne Bancroft, yeah, I was not Anne Margaret, not Raul Julia, um, uh, not David what Bowie. The, what are the films again? Wasn't David Bowie in the uh, Man Who Fell? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Man films were um, The Man Who Fell to Earth, Eating Raul, The Graduate, and Grumpy Old Men. I think it'd be a good um, uh, clue to say this is a classic first few seasons of Saturday Night Live straight man. Saturday Night. Not what? Dan Aykroyd. Mm -hmm. No. Was, was it, it um, was it a host? Was it the guy with glasses on Saturday Night Live? Get always wore white. That uh, who are you thinking of, Dan? Come on, oh come on, work with he me. Was, he was kind of the background character. He, he wore a wire rimmed glasses. Yep. Oh, Mara's I can't think in of the his... chat saying she has no idea. It's worth it's a not, shot here, though. It's not Buck Henry. Yeah, it's, it's, Buck, it's Henry. Buck Henry. There we go. Oh, yeah. nice. okay. Way to go, Beth. I can yeah, on the nice. my tongue. I could picture him. It was because I'm more thinking glasses. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was kind of obsessed with him at the beginning of Saturday Night Live, 
um, just for the reason that I think his only job was to sort of to stand there and absorb everything that was going on around him. I'm like, there's kind of a cool role to be the straight man. It's like, if you do it well, you know, you can really get a good laugh. So they say, no, they, they say being the straight man is the toughest role. So I mean, that's right. That's right. He's written screenplays and stuff. So yes. he's yeah. hilariously yes. funny. So wasn't he, was he Blazing Saddles? uh wrote i don't think, he was I don't think so. or partial or no he was part of get smart i know that so okay ah, okay okay yeah blazing saddles a movie that could not be made today <laughs> not at all <laughs> for sure <laughs> no i'm sure they i'm sure they could take flatulence to a different level with today's level of uh all the race would not yeah. be allowed now no. yeah that's for sure here's our next set of four films uh jabberwocky Eric the Viking, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, Ooh. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Eric Idle. Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam. Oh, Don Cleese. Uh, Eric, uh, Michael Palin. It's got to be Eric. one of the... Who Terry, jo Terry, Terry Jones. Jones. It's Terry Jones. Yeah, it's There's Terry only Jones. so many more. It was yeah. going to be John Cleese's wife next. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Jones um, was... Uh, gosh, I... In the middle of the pandemic, I, I think I mentioned it before, I picked up a whole bunch of uh, Monty Python um, uh, documentaries and stuff. And he, he really had a, a steep and uh, very quick mental decline at the end. He passed yeah. away, if you remember, like the day before the pandemic hit the United States and it kind of got lost. Uh, oh, Mara got a seat. That's always good. It's always good to get a seat on the plane. That's what that's, I always say. As opposed keep to flapping, Mara. Just plane. keep your arms flapping. Oh, so... I, uh, no, I just remember no. uh, Eric the Viking coming out when I was in high school. And uh, I think it was one of the first times ever in my life I purposely went to see a film and then sat in the middle of uh, what was essentially a completely empty theater. Like nobody saw that movie, but me and my friends were there. Wow. Next up, The Glass Menagerie, The Bad and the Beautiful, hmm. Gunfight at the OK Corral, Hmm. The Big Sky and To Catch a Spy. Ooh, To Catch a Spy. It's Ooh. a classic sort of golden Hollywood actor. Jimmy Stewart. John Wayne. Mm -hmm. Passed away relatively recently, but at a very advanced age. Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas. There we go. Kirk okay. Douglas. Yes. But no Spartacus in that list? Doggone it. I know, no Spartacus. We're, you know, Julie likes to do these the way that she likes yeah. to do them. You got to come in from the side a little bit. You I'm know? waiting for like the Clausen, you know, like public theater performance or, you know, Playhouse or something like that. That's right. I don't know That's if you right. guys have seen uh, the movie Trumbo. If you haven't, you should. Hmm. Um, it's about Dalton Trumbo, who was a who was blacklisted in Hollywood because he was a mm -hmm. communist, basically. Um, and the guy who plays um, Kirk Douglas in that, because when Kirk is making Spartacus, I think with, uh, I can't remember the director's name, but Trumbo may have been part of the, the guy who plays Kirk Douglas is literally such a dead ringer for him. Wow. Wow. It's unbelievable. Plus there's all the, you know, John Wayne was pretty uh, anti-communist and, and, pretty free with his criticisms of actors who actually had served in the war when he had not. Yikes. Yeah. Let's go to the greatest story ever told. Mm -hmm. The Exorcist. Three Days of the Condor. Awakenings. Oh, wait, um, Awakenings, was that the Robin Williams? Yeah, and Patch Robert. Uh, yeah. Was um, that Robert yeah, De Niro? It, it would be and the, the guy, Exorcist. Who else was in The Exorcist? It would have to be the guy who played the priest, right? Max von oh, Sydow. Uh, Max von, yeah, yes, yeah. It's Max von Sydow is who it is. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. He's sadly gone as well. He starred oh. in everything, didn't he? I mean, geez, yep. come on, he was Ming the Merciless in the Flash, or That's no, true. Flash Gordon. I Flash was Gordon. going to uh, give a bonus uh, to the list that was Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, of which he was in the first, you know, minute and a half or whatever, but still, you know, great actor. Mm -hmm. Try Jason and the Argonauts, Bridget Jones' Diary, A Night to Remember, Goldfinger. 
Hmm. Hold on. What was the first one again, Matt? Jason the first one the was Argonauts. the Argonauts. Jason and the Argonauts. Oh, um. Bridget Jones' Diary, oh, Night to Remember, wow. Goldfinger. Was it the woman that played Athena? It was a woman. Okay. Um, yeah. The woman who played Holly Go Lightly? No, I'm. That's no, no. Uh, no um, the woman who got what? painted with gold, right? And was that was no. How she died? This is the one of the starring roles in Goldfinger, actually. The Honor pilot. Blackman. It's Honor Blackman. I yeah, know. that's right. Drew would have known that had he okay. been here, because Jason and the Argonauts is one of his favorite films. Oh, so. that's a great film. Yeah, Although, I don't know the other, I don't know the first three. You know. Ray Harryhausen is one of his. I, I knew David relate to that. I met the <laughs> man twice in my life. Okay, I can die happy. So. <laughs> Who's um? What's a night to remem- um, remember? That's the Titanic. Oh, that's probably why I haven't seen it. Okay, I've seen parts of it. Yeah. If if Jim were here, we would have at least okay. been able to, to yeah. fill in that bit. Yeah, Jim was probably on that on that boat too. So. <laughs> okay how Jim about been, jim's been on every boat to our to our recollection right something like that like video see ya enjoy flying ah we're down to a trio now okay how about lord of the rings return of the king the fifth element brazil oh, and chariots go. of fire wow well, Lord of the Rings has like a cast of like 10,000. So yeah, it really does. It doesn't really help. I was going to go um, Bruce Willis a for a bit. Element, but... Brazil, and Chariots of Fire. Well Ian known McKellen? films. Ian McKellen? Not Ian McKellen. John Hurt? But uh, how about another Ian, Beth? Uh, Ian from Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Uh, Ian McKellen. Ian Holm? Ian no. Holm. Yeah. Ian nice Holm. one, Beth. That's right. Ah. Uh, Oh, that's right. okay. Fifth, okay, I was just trying to think. Fifth Element. Who? Okay, got it. okay. Limited yep, number of actors named Ian, so that helps. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that, right. Yeah, that's hopefully. How about? Oh, this is uh, speaking of all over the map. Holy smokes! Fatal Instinct. It's a mad, 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 mad world. There's another movie with a billion actors and actresses in it. <laughs> oh God! And Toy Story Four. <laughs> what? Wait, from Mad, Mad, Mad World to Toy Story 4, which just recently came out. I mean, it's it's just less than three years old. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but Mad, Mad World's like done in like a billion Seven, years ago. 60s yeah. or 70s. Yeah, it seems okay. I think it was one of my childhood. Well, not George Burns. Mm-mm. Yeah, that was an oh. oh God. Not John Denver, because it's not John Denver, fortunately. <laughs> okay. Uh, because I don't remember anybody else in Oh God. I mean, this was a bit part, but it was a part in the movie. And what was the other movie, Matt? So we have It's Mad, 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 Mad World, Oh God, Fatal Instinct, and Toy Story 4. Fatal Instinct, not Fatal Basic Instinct. Instinct? Right, Fatal Instinct. Can we have initials? Uh, the initials are CR. You'll definitely get it when you get it. Christopher. I should think so. Carl. <laughs> Uh, bu- bu- uh, Carla, Carl. Uh, I'm blank. Carl? Oh, wait, wait. I'm, I'm watching Matt's eyebrows. God. I'm waiting for them to knit. I'm trying to uh, picture the cast of uh, Mad 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 World. I'm trying to think of Toy Story 4. Who are the voices yeah, but, in there? Oh, I wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't know because I'm not so great with the audio connection. I'm just that geeky and I can't think of who. I know. Is so you know who it was? It was. Um... It was Carl Reiner. Carl, Carl Reiner. Was in all those movies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Who was oh, he in wow. Toy Story 4? I'm trying to remember because it really was, uh, whew, that was a departure. And it's hard for me to get uh, uh, Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele out of my head as the little ducky and the little bunny. They were absolutely hilarious. Yeah. But there was some, you know, um, character getting on in years and, and he was in it. So, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen How about, Toy Story 4 yet. Uh, it's, oh. you know, you really are at the cash grab stage, uh, Beth, but th- you, you can't beat a Pixar story to catch your your attention for at least a few minutes. I mean, oh, yeah. even their worst is so much better than most of what's out there, you know? It's, yeah. So, wow, this is, wow. 
Um, oh. <laughs> I Man, don't, quit, don't scare us like this. Don't I scare know, us. But, but wait till you see. The Bad News Bears go to Japan. Oh, God. Little oh. Nikki, Little Miss Sunshine, and Shrek the Third. Oh, dear God. Um, uh, not Walter Matthau. Yeah. Nope. Not Tatum, not Tatum O'Neill. Uh, Shrek the Third. Uh, who right? played the grandfather in Little Miss Sunshine? Uh, um, Adam Arkin. Adam Ar- Alan Arkin. Alan nope, Arkin. That's, that's not what I have here. Not what you have there. Initials R.P. Robert. Richie. Raul. Little Miss Sunshine. Ray, I mean, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna put it out there now. Yeah. It's, I think it's about time. I've never seen the Bad News Bears go to Japan, but now maybe I'm interested in seeing it. Though I'm kidding. Is, uh, you know what it is? It's Regis Philbin, if you can believe it. Regis Philbin. Regis Philbin. Yeah. He was um, in Little Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. I remember mm-hmm. him. I think the scene in Shrek. Was he? Shrek was he a third, judge yeah. at the? The competition, or, 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 yeah, or did he play be. himself? I mean, you know, that seems like more his role, more his speed, yeah. for this sort of thing. You know, I bet he was a judge at the Little Miss Sunshine pageant. Yeah, it's or he was the impossible. host of it, possibly. How about uh, this one will warm us right back up again? Uh, Cocoon, The Natural, The Electric Horseman, The China Syndrome, Robert Redford. He oh, was oh, um, no, no, who was the guy that they shot up? Um. Uh, yeah, as he's trying to stop the meltdown. The, the, it's the co- not Steve Duesenberg. No, um, he was in Cocoon. Um, he was selling oatmeal or something like that. Oh, uh, Hugh, Hugh Cronin. Hugh no, Cronin. Um, no, bald guy, glasses, big walrus mustache. Um, oh, Wilfred Brimley. Wilfred okay. Brimley. Oh, there okay. we go. For a moment, I was going to draw him and put him up to the camera so everyone could see who I was talking about. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh. Now we're we're really putting it together here. Let's uh, continue on with uh, the Great Muppet Caper, Theater oh of Blood, Snow White, and On Her Majesty's Secret Service. George Lazenby? No, no. Uh, think female. The woman oh. who played um, the secretary. I can't remember. Money Lois Penny? Maxwell. No, I'm kind of surprised. Usually, you you all are all over these James Bond references like a lot. Well, Wait, who, who, who's the female lead in that? I can't um, picture the movie. So, Diana Rigg. It was Diana Rigg. Yes, Rigg, wasn't it's it? Diana yeah, yeah, Rigg. Okay, that's, yeah, that's right. right. Okay. You got it, Mrs. Bond. Yep. So what um, what Snow, what Snow White movie are you referring to? Yeah, um, not the Disney one. Yeah, it's not the Disney one. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure which which it is, but um, yeah, I, it's uh, you know you look at these titles and you're like, okay, it could be anything. I, I swear, bad news bears go to Japan. I'm looking it up on Wikipedia when we're done here. I'm not even. Joking. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> it's a real movie. If that's what yeah. you're worried about. Yeah. I remember Last seeing one. the original in the theater. Yeah, same right, here. Now. Right. Time Bandits, Marnie. Dragonheart and Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Oh, your favorite movie! Oh, <laughs> um, Sean Connery. That's Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery. So now um, you only get one guess here, professors, and I'm pretty sure you're going to hit it uh, right in the center. Remember Julie's um, pledge that we would get to the end, and they all have something in common: Buck Henry, Terry Jones, Kirk Douglas, Max von Sydow, Honor Blackman, Ian Holm. Carl Reiner, Regis Philbin, Wilfred Brimley, Diana Rigg, Sean Connery. They all passed. I know that, right? Yeah, so what I'll have to give it time? to you. Not only that, they passed during the year 2020. They all passed within oh. 12 months of each oh. other. So. Oh, okay. That is quite wow. a uh, stack of celebrity there, if you think about it. Some long timers there, you know? Jeez. Great Diana Rigg movie, Evil Under the Sun. With Ooh. Peter Ustinov as Hercule Poirot, yeah. she plays. She gets murdered, but she plays this unbelievably sort of snotty um, Broadway actress who has a run-in with Maggie Smith, and it's pretty hilarious. I highly recommend the movie. Excellent. I, I just remember having puberty watching her in the Avengers. That's all. So, 
I was, yeah. I knew the Avengers were going to come up at some point. Well, and then finishing it up, finishing off her career in Game of Thrones, I thought was really yeah. Uh, she was she really was good. really outstanding. Yep. In 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 uh, Game of Thrones. Yep. That was a good list. That was a good yeah, list. Send more. Is, Those are good questions. Fantastic questions. I, I think so if, if Jim was floating around, I'm sure he'd love some of these questions too, because I'm sure he, you know, he probably knows a few of them. So I, I almost gave ahead. it away without realizing it. Again, you know, Matt should really read more ahead or maybe just remember more ahead. But I was like, oh yeah, didn't Cherry Jones die right before? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you did. Okay. Whoops. Oh, geez. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. well, there goes a bonus. It was a bonus there hint. Was a bonus. <laughs> so i tell you what, let's, uh, you know, for our last little bit here, as we usually do, the imponderables. Uh I'm wondering whether we could talk about, this one's been on the list for a while, and I I haven't avoided it. I'm just like, "Eh, we'll have to wait for the right moment. I think we've arrived. Okay. What's your favorite sports-themed movie? And I'll get us going as I have in the past. I just got to say, if there is one movie that if it's on television, even if it's just on crap television with 10 minutes of commercials on in between, I will just be wrapped to the screen. It's Moneyball. Moneyball might be one of my favorite movies of all time. I just, I love everything about it. I love it. Yeah, he's so, that's a very nice, subtle performance from him. And Philip Seymour Hoffman is, boy, there's another actor. Mm -hmm. um, I like the replacements with keanu reeves which is like the funniest football movie ever ever yes uh <laughs> glory road oh wow um, for basketball remember when we saw that in the theater dan yeah huh <laughs> yeah we saw that i, I actually paid to see a basketball movie oh my god <laughs> you're gonna have to give me some better you have to ring the ring the uh, bell a little louder remember the titans that's of a course. great remember the titans Denzel the cutting Washington. edge shout out to leslie oh yeah oh yeah if she were here it'd be cutting edge all the way either that or uh, uh i always mess it up what was the miracle on ice movie called was it called miracle, miracle on, ice? on ice yeah okay okay the her brooks movie yeah yep that was but great money but i actually liked Moneyball quite a bit too mm-hmm. i thought that we owned that one so it's um it's weird i feel like i'm in the movie when of course obviously i am not but is just at the point where I think I knew enough about watching the Tigers. And then there's this, this brief moment where the A's are trading and, and sending Juan Gonzalez to the Tigers, which was the great experiment of the early 2000s mm. that failed miserably. But um, I just think that that's, uh, it's interesting to see how it's all woven together. And yeah, I think there was a time when people in my generation thought that Brad Pitt was just destined for hunky roles and then that's it. But he is one of the greatest actors of all time. Oh, I just yeah. love He's him. He's a great actor. Yes. Just love him. But you're right. I think he gets that sort of pretty boy mm-hmm. designation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Dan, mm-hmm. you had to have seen and liked some sports movies sometime. It's definitely not all the bad news bears go to Japan, is it? No, <laughs> no uh, I don't. I don't typically like uh, flock to sports movies, but I do like Sandlot. And I do like men with brooms. There we go. Oh, because they're there kind of go. just lighthearted and funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, what what about like slap shot for back? You know, a little old. I never saw it. <gasps> <gasps> it's. I like, uh, I like Field of Dream. I do like. Uh, that was gonna be my. That's you know, that was gonna be mine. Rudy. Sure. You know the. You know that was also another one. Um. I was thinking it was. Uh, bend it like Beckham. Yeah. Oh, sure. Or, yeah, the longest the yard, part. maybe the original. Yeah, yep. I remember that with Bert. Oh. Bert Reynolds. Oh God, Dom DeLuise. <laughs> um, I'm glad you brought up Sandlot, though, because I I feel I don't know if you all caught how uh, Major League Baseball had the the Field of Dreams game this year between yeah. the Yankees and whoever else was playing the Yankees. Chicago White Sox. The White yeah. Sox. Um, the the players came in. To their, you know, uh, a sound off at the beginning, right? The lineups from the corn in the outfield it that was, came from the corn onto the field. It and was, like, a, it was so it was moving. It was on top. Yeah. It was so over the top. I mean, I'm not a huge Kevin Costner fan, but boy, did Major League Baseball do it right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul Durham is a speaking of sports. Movie. There's there another one. Go. Yeah, there we go. Um, the catcher comedy. was a spy about Mo Berg. The mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That was good. 
Oh, what's what's the other one I'm thinking about? The uh, the J- Jamaican bobsled run movie. Oh, cool. <laughs> Here's running. another. Cool running. That's yeah. right. That's right. I remember the soundtrack was amazing. That's all. I love the soundtrack. So <laughs> that was oh, no. that was quite a phenomenon when it first came out. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, but think about it. that was the last time like amateurs could actually co- compete in the Olympics. After that, they kind of like that's it. No more. You know. And no, everybody no. rooted for the Jamaican bobsled team. In yeah, because wasn't wasn't like, that also the yeah. year that Eddie the Eagle Edwards also like did the did the the ski jump for England yeah, with I with no so. experience and almost killed himself? Yeah. And but again, people were cheering for him. You know, I mean, he was a celebrity after that. Now you all are firing me up. We're only a few months away from Winter Olympics. This is going to be quite a bang up twelve months here. This Dear is Lord. the first Olympics, the one in Tokyo, that I have not seen any of since I was six. Wow. I started watching them. So wow. 1972 Munich Olympics was the first. Try. So I watched the one where people get killed, of course. Um, <laughs> and I remember that. It was awful. Um, yeah, I didn't watch any of the Olympics. Really? I normally am glued to the screen for the gymnastics and the diving and the swimming and the track and field. I don't know. I just didn't do any of it. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not much of a summer Olympic fan. I'm more of a winter Olympic fan. So I, would I think say people tend to be one or the other. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely winter. So, yeah. Well, professors, uh, thanks for that update. We, uh, Considering the imponderables we've done in the past, it's absolutely uh, um, awesome. I think we listed like 25 films to get everybody fired up uh, wow. the weekend. But uh, that's all the time we have for today. So let's say goodbye, Dan. Uh, goodbye. Beth. Goodbye. And Dave. See ya. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy.